So we're talking about trade, particularly the South Africa-UK trade relationship. Just give us a sense of the main trends that you're seeing in this regard, uh, both negative and positive. Nampu, thanks for that. Quite an interesting question and a, a topic to talk about. When we look at SA exports to the UK um, last year, 2022, the total value was 102 billion. Uh, when you compare that to 2010, the value was actually 22 billion. So quite significant growth over the last uh, decade or so. From the import side, where South Africa is importing from the UK, actually no growth. So the value has stayed constant from tw uh, 2010 to 2022 at around 27 billion rand per annum. What is interesting on the export side is that it's remained 50% precious metals throughout time. So no, no change in a, from a sector contribution point of view. But from an from a export point of view on, on um, vehicles and vegetables, it has grown five times and three times respectively. So Louis, with Brexit, obviously um, there could be more scope for trade between the UK and other countries. What's your expectation around that? vis-a-vis -vis South Africa and the wider continent? I think what we've seen the UK government being active with is signing up economic participation agreements with various countries on the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at history, um, trade has actually been quite low between the continent and the UK, um, and it's been deteriorating. So from high single digits to sort of low single digits at the moment. And so I think the upside potential is there now that uh, they've exited uh, the EU. If you look at the continent, the population of Africa is 17% of the global population, but only contributes about 3% or participates in 3% of global trade. So there is a significant opportunity. And what we're seeing maybe sooner than what we think is that the population in Africa will actually exceed China and India um, in the very near future. So there is an opportunity for people to come and participate uh, on, the, on the continent. Um, I very recently was at Cybos in Toronto, where we engaged with uh, some of the UK banks, and we actively looking at ways to facilitate trade between the UK and South Africa at the moment, and then more broadly between the UK and our subsidiaries that we have a presence in. Excellent. So in terms of facilitation of trade, um, just give us a sense of what RMB's value proposition is, and what is it that you do to differentiate yourself? It's a very good question. I think um, in a product that is quite commoditized, it becomes increasingly more difficult to, to differentiate yourself. I do think at RMB we've done that quite well. Um, and you can maybe speak to our clients to get uh, input on that. But um, what we've done is we've you know, uh, created dedicated teams to, to engage with clients who really understand the continent and can help them navigate, um, I would say, the intricacies of dealing with, with uh, countries in Africa. And then we've also uh, deliberately taken a, a more pro-digital stance in trade finance. And we participate in some global platforms where we can sort of meet clients where they are, where they are active. Um, and also from a processing and, and, and general client engagement point of view, we've been very, very much more digital, if I can put it like that. So Louis, you're going to be participating in the Global Trade Review Africa function taking place in London uh, in early November. Just give us a sense of what that event is about, the kind of people that you're going to be exposed to and what you're likely to be communicating there. So we've had a very long-standing relationship with uh, GTR and you know GTR hosts one of this, I would say the premier event uh, based in the UK for African trade. Um, we get the opportunity to meet our international clients, uh, be it a corporate, uh, banks, insurers or other financial institutions. And this year we'll have uh, Emerick Perrin Geno, who will um, discuss export credit uh, finance reforms. Mm -hmm.